There was a new anime announcement a while ago on Twitter, and the cover art for the manga really caught my eye, specifically the skeleton guy. It looked like a really cool character, and I just wanted to know what the hell it was. So instead of waiting around for the anime to be made, I decided I'd rather catch up on the manga and just binge read it all. And surprisingly, the Unwanted Immortal Adventurer, or the Unwanted Undead Adventurer, is one of the better series I've read lately, but it's still very far from perfect. There won't be too many spoilers in this video, but I feel like I need to say it every video, so spoiler warning. Also, I've been fairly sick recently, so that's why I sound a bit weird. The story begins with an adventurer who's at the lowest rank in his guild, and has been for literal years unable to get strong enough to become a higher rank, but he's been obtaining information the entire time as an adventurer and knows a lot of the people in the guild and around town. He knows a lot about monsters and the paths new adventurers should take. He's just got a lot of general knowledge that makes him a massive asset to the guild and he's super friendly and tries to help out as many people as he can. But one day he finds his way into an uncharted area of one of the easier labyrinth that newer adventurers are known to frequent. While he's mapping out the area, he makes his way into a massive cavern where he encounters a dragon. He gets eaten and dies like 10 pages into the manga. It's very tragic and sad, but these stories are always doing the unthinkable and he ends up waking up as a skeleton and has to figure out what exactly happened and how to regain as much of his humanity back as possible. Luckily for him, there's a way he can return to somewhat of a normal life through a monster-specific world mechanic of existential evolution. And that's the basic plot at the beginning of the story, and it changes around a little bit as things happen, but for the most part, the goal is to evolve and grind to reach the highest ranks of the guild. It's not the most unique story I've ever read, and there's a lot of other stories that do individual things better, but it was oddly good at holding my attention in comparison to the other series. It's essentially a reincarnation story, but... Unlike most isekais or other stories, the main character, Rent, is able to just maintain his life fairly normal if he wants. And before I continue, I'm using the name Rent because it's the name on both the wiki and on my anime list. I've seen multiple translations of the manga and light novel using different versions of Rent, Lent, Lendo, whatever. And I genuinely don't know which is the correct version to use. But unlike all of the teachers growing up, I'm just going to trust the wiki. Unlike similar stories, Rent isn't in some unknown world or location with an entirely new body. He's literally right where he died. He just happens to be undead now. Which I haven't seen a lot of stories do, so it's slightly refreshing to me. I think it's fairly common for these types of stories to take in a lot of inspiration from role-playing games or video games in general, and this story is no exception. It actually might be the closest story to a video game that I've ever read without actually being set in a video game, like series like Sword Art or Half Prince for example. There's a few things that really stick out in that regard, like the labyrinth system feels like a bunch of random dungeons around the world where players can farm enemies for gold or just to train in general. The monsters have spawning mechanics, and there's even boss room mechanics. There's literally an item that he gets given by a random character that feels like an NPC encounter, where he just obtains an auto-updating map, which is basically just a mini-map. I don't know, a lot of the world and the interactions feel like a pretty standard MMO experience, as someone who loves MMOs and role-playing games in general, I don't hate it, but I wish it seemed less like a video game and more like an actual living and thriving world. There's also a lot of narration or inner thoughts and just a lot of moments that are over-explained as they're introduced to explain the world in more detail. I'm not the biggest fan of this style of story writing, as I think providing too much detail can ruin a story very quickly, but I also understand that people who make these types of worlds really love them and want to give the reader as much of an insight into the world as possible so they can really experience the world and everything the writer brought to life. But a lot of the interactions between characters really feel like random side quests that don't really matter in the grand scheme of things 
and just end up as like one-off moments skipping to the next quest with the character some of the side characters just seem to disappear never to be heard from again at least thus far in the manga i haven't read much of the light novel and only really skimmed a few of the early chapters so i can't really say whether or not some of these characters feel less like one-off npcs entirely in the original writing but a lot of them just don't seem like actual people in the manga which turns me off of the story a bit but it's not important enough to make me dislike the story as a whole i just find that it's less enjoyable when a character is introduced just to be immediately discarded all of the characters have pretty nice designs and none of them really feel like too generic or recycled characters they're all fairly unique especially rent as of the current chapter he's achieved a few evolutions which I think is a great design choice because you can basically change how the character looks almost entirely with each evolution he goes through. Starting out as a basic skeleton and shifting into a ghoul and his most recent rebirth were such cool moments in the story and hopefully they'll be animated extremely well. Each evolution he goes through builds up the character more as he's quickly reaching new heights that he could never reach as a normal human. He had a lot of knowledge and charisma as a human and built up a lot of good relationships with the people around town. The only thing he was really lacking was the strength to progress further so he focused on the other skills in order to contribute as much as possible and now that he's obtained the strength he's finally becoming the overpowered fantasy character that all protagonists desire. I don't see very much room for any meaningful character development though, considering for the most part, Rent as a character seemed to start off as a rather complete character, despite being relatively weak, which I find both refreshing and slightly irritating. There hasn't really been any situation to make the character grow as a person, and it's only about him getting stronger and testing his new abilities to see how easily he can just walk through everything now. But every other series seems to go through a phase of overcoming character flaws and this series just seemingly bypasses all of it the biggest issue he's had to deal with thus far has been just trusting other people which is pretty understandable since he's literally a monster that people actively hunt and eliminate there is a potential that in upcoming chapters he ends up dealing with some past issues about someone's death that have been mentioned a little bit but it was glossed over so quickly that i can't see it actually changing much about the character I feel like I say this all the time in every video, but the art is some of the best I've ever seen. I'm a sucker for a well-drawn skeleton, and this just blows most of them out of the water. Pretty much every monster just looks incredible, and the fight scenes are beautiful. It's pretty rare for a series to pull me in with the art alone, and has only happened on a handful of occasions, but the moment I saw art from this series, I was going to read it no matter what the story consisted of. There are a few panels that aren't the best looking, but they are so few and far between that it's hard to even notice. But it's really one of those mangas that stands out above the vast majority of others visually. It is literally always the hentai artists that make the best looking manga, so be warned before looking up any of their other work. Despite the flaws I think this series has, it's actually a really entertaining manga, but it teeters on the line of being just another generic isekai clone with a slightly altered story. There is a possibility that the anime ends up pushing it further than the others, but I'm not entirely sure how likely that is to happen. Personally, I really like the series, and I'm looking forward to watching the anime whenever it comes out. Thanks for watching.